So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. What did you guys think about those chickens yesterday? That footage I just showed you was yesterday afternoon. Those guys love pumpkins. Let's go check them out and see what's left. Looks like they're still eating on it. Well, it looks like there's a little bit of pumpkin left in there. They've been hulling it out. My wife went ahead yesterday and split it open. Well, somebody's being loud over there. How are we doing today, girls? I'll let you guys out here in a little while, okay? Okay. All right, guys, we've got a lot going on today. The first thing we need to do is go down here to the burn pile and get it lit and let that start burning off. There's a bunch of cherry on there and mostly pine and cedar, so we can get rid of that today. It will probably burn for the next two or three days though. And for you guys out there that say that I burn nice wood you could do something with, trust me, this stuff is junk. It's slabs from pine and cedar and it's the pith from cherry. Not very good guys, not very good. I kept a lot of the cherry pith for smoking, but this stuff here had the carpenter ants in it, so we need to get rid of it. And it will burn for probably the next two or three days. I've got a lot of wood down there right now. Well, we got the hatefulest cat on YouTube with us today. Hello, mama. As usual, she walks away from the camera. So a lot of you guys asked why she's the hatefulest cat on YouTube and you just saw it. She runs from the camera, she knocks over my tripod, She'll scratch me if I pick her up, but when I look down, she's always there. She's always there. She's like a dog that follows me everywhere. She's always tormenting me. Tell you what, she's a good cat though. We've had her for about, I think about seven years now, maybe eight years. I have to ask the wife, I'm not sure. So you guys hang in there. Let's go get this burn pile going, and we are gonna be sawmilling today. We'll throw some red oak up there and see how it looks. Before we get started on that red oak, 
Let me show you another reason why we get rid of the pith, especially out of cherry. This was the log from the last video. It yielded those 24 inch wide boards. And this is the pith that was left over. Right there's the pith in the middle. If you're new to this channel, the pith is the direct center of the tree. And right there around the pith is the juvenile core. It's pretty much junk. It's when the tree was very young and there's not clusters in here and reaction wood and it's just, it's terrible. You gotta get rid of it, especially in cherry. So this has been laying here for a few days. You can see the check right there on the surface that's developed because of the core being right there in the middle. And as you come on down through here, I think this is a six by six large face check right there. And this has not been in the sunlight, guys. It's been laying down there on the bed of the mill. So it's not got any sun exposure. And look at that right there. See that check right there going all the way down through it? Trash, guys. This stuff is trash. I will saw it into firewood, though. You see I got my little chalk marks every 16 inches. I'll put this back for firewood so we'll get something out of it. But the pith and cherry, guys, is terrible. It's worse than any other wood as far as I'm concerned, as far as the pith goes. Little surface checks right there. Terrible stuff. I think you guys get the point. Let's get this cut up and we'll talk about the red oak. All right, guys, a few things about this red oak and we'll get started. This is an eight and a half footer and it was 10 foot a few minutes ago before I put the Husqvarna on it. And the reason we cut off some of that is because the customer wants eight and a half foot boards or eight foot boards rather. I leave six inches on so they could square them up. Now, if I leave this at 10 foot, there is less waste that way, but it's costing me more in production. I've got to use more blade life to make a longer cut and more fuel more time, the boards are heavier, and I'm not getting paid for a 10 foot board. He wants eight footers. So we'll take that chunk that we cut off down there. We'll make it into firewood later on. That's why you do that. Don't give nothing away like that for free for you guys out there running sawmills. If somebody wants eight footers, sell them eight footers. If the log's 10 foot, take off 18 inches because you're not gonna get that back. You're gonna go in the hole and lose money. So here's what we're gonna be sawing this into. Two inches on the thickness, which is eight quarter, and on the width, six and a half. And of course, eight feet on the length. This will be used for trailer decking, and, it came, and this order came from another sawmill a buddy of mine runs across town. And the main reason I took this order was, number one, I got more red oak than I know what to do with right now. Number two, I like sawing two by sixes, so it's a, a good day for me right there. I enjoyed sawing dimensional lumber because I don't get to do it that often. He got an order for this and he don't have any oak right now, so we're gonna help him out. And for you guys out there with sawmills, just because somebody has a mill and you think you're in competition with them a few minutes down the road, talk to that guy because he may get orders like this instance right here that he can't fill and you may be able to fill them for him. So always remember that. They may look like your competition, but you may be able to help each other out. And this log is low grade, the pith is off-centered. Down here on the operator's side, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but the pith is down here toward the bottom. And on the other end, it's a little bit in the opposite direction. So this is not a great log for grade lumber, which is what red oak is usually sawed for here at my mill. Several cat faces, a lot of knots, a little bit of taper. This will be a great use for this. Now let me uh, explain something else real fast. The customer wants this for trailer decking. Now, usually I would tell the customer, if it was my customer, this is coming second hand, I would say, 
I can saw you some trailer decking, but red oak is going to rot. It will rot on a trailer deck. White oak is the best for trailer decking. Now we'll say this also, a lot of guys saw up chestnut oak for trailer decking. And chestnut oak looks like white oak, it's in the same family, but it doesn't have the properties that make it waterproof like white oak does. White oak is very good for outside in the elements, it will last a long time. So having said that, usually I would tell a customer, go find white oak if I don't have it because red oak will rot on you. But this customer is kind of unique. He's hauling a lot of bulldozers on his trailer and he told that my buddy who runs the sawmill it won't last long enough to rot. I go through several red oak trailer decks a year. So I guess if he goes through them pretty fast, he's hard on his equipment or hard on his trailers rather, then it ain't going to matter. That's the only reason I agreed to this order is because when he called me and he said red oak, I thought, well, that, no, that don't sound right. Unless it's a cattle trailer, be okay because it's got cover, but a regular open trailer, no. But since he said, you know, I go through two or three decks a year because of my bulldozers, then I can see that. So, and white oak right now is pretty expensive in this area. Red oak is really cheap. A lot of the large sawmills aren't even buying red oak right now. You'd be shocked if you knew what red oak was uh, going for right now in the market as far as Northeast Tennessee goes. It's really low right now. These logs came from a tree service. So we should get some nice two by sixes out of this and there's a few rules we need to go by when sawing dimensional lumber. We need to try to keep the pith as straight as possible and also try to isolate it to the middle of either a two by six or a cant that we can get rid of. And the rest of it is pretty easy as far as the sawing goes. Two by sixes go pretty fast. We should get a lot of two by sixes out of this. Two by six and a half. I need to write that on my hand the way I don't saw the wrong width. So uh, should be a good log. I like sawing up red oak. On the sawmill, we've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. That's a brand new blade. I just put it on, so we should be good for the day. And also, this was a yard tree, but since we have an exposed end grain right here, it tells us there's no metal in it. With oak, if it has a nail or any form of metal, you'll have a stain on the end grain. It's a large black dot. And it could be multiple if there's a lot of nails in here. But luckily today, we don't have any, even though this did come from a, somebody's residential front yard. I kind of was hoping that uh, we didn't have that. When I opened this up, it wouldn't have surprised me if I did see some metal, but we're in good shape right there. So let's open this one up, friends, and see how it goes. A big shout out to everybody on Patreon for supporting me here in the channel. Really appreciate you guys. If you're interested in that, finding out what these logs cost and how much I'm making off this lumber and getting your questions answered, there's a link down below. You can join for $5 a month or you can pay $60 and you get the whole year. I put the videos on there before they go on YouTube with no monetization ads. So, and the guy the other day said, uh, I went to cover this, the guy complained the other day, sent me an email, said, love the channel, but you put a lot of ads in your videos. Guys, Google puts the ads in these videos. I have no control over it. If I put out a video and I don't monetize it, they will monetize it and put their own ads in there and make all the money from it. And I won't get my small little cut that I usually get anyway. So YouTube controls that guys. I have no control over that at all. I wish I did, but I don't. You guys hang in there. See what this looks like. Should be a pretty nice log.
So for you guys new to the channel, did you see me using this before I made the third cut? I put it on the bed rail and I made sure that this flat surface was square to the bed rail. Sometimes when you use your clamp, you can over clamp your log and it knocks it out of square. If I'm grade sawing or if I'm doing live edge slabs, I don't care about that. If I'm doing dimensional lumber, I do care about that. I want everything to square as I could get it. Even though it's gonna shrink as it dries, this is green lumber. He'll put this on the trailer deck and probably this weekend and it will shrink. I do want it square when it leaves my sawmill because I like how it looks and that's the proper way of sawing. So if you guys out there running sawmills, if you saw like I do and you make one cut on the top, then you flip it for a second cut, go ahead before you make that third cut and do this right here and it will ensure that you have a nice square cant to work off of. It's extra work, you have to walk down here and check it a few times, but it's worth it. Because you can see right there, guys, there's no light underneath that square right there. None right there. I tell you, that's what you want. Nice, proper sawing. So this is the cant we're working off of. I'll come down from this top face, six and a half, and get one more cant from the top, then we'll flip it up on its side and I may be able to squeeze two cants out of this bottom one right here, I'm not sure. And one of them will have the pith in it, we'll try to isolate that to the middle of a two by six and probably discard it. You guys hang in there, let's finish this one up. 